Hi everybody, I'd like to welcome you to the first BC Craft Brewers uh, Guild um, Happy Hour. <laughs> We're uh, excited to be here. If you don't know who I am, I'm Ken Beatty. I'm the Executive Director of the BC Craft Brewers Guild. And uh, we're super stoked. Uh, we want to do more of these this year, but when we talked about this idea without Chinery, uh, Lori and her team jumped up right away and said, we will do the first one. Yes. And uh, so we've got a space, we've got about, uh, we're, we're going really live high tech. I think we're Facebook living. Uh, we're going to record this for our out of town members and the members that couldn't make it in town. So we'll, uh, we hope to do this and kind of continue this on throughout the year um, in order to uh, give value not only to our membership, but to our associate members. So thank you very much, Lori, and we look forward to the presentation. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much, everyone, for coming. And as I mentioned, it will be recorded, so don't forget to smile. Um, I'm very excited to be here. Like, I'm also uh, a bit nervous, <laughs> so I apologize if I'm a bit stumbling around, but hopefully you'll find this um, useful and entertaining and learn a thing or two in the process. So I also want to thank the BC Craft Brewers Guild for helping us putting this together. And just so you know, it was first proposed to give us like a lunch and learn. And we were like, what about we make it a happy hour? Like, let's be a bit less corporate. <laughs> All right. Um, so just a little bit about me, like why you should maybe listen to me or maybe not. Uh, <laughs> so like I say, my name is Laurie and I've been designing wine and beer labels for the last 12 years. Uh, you may know some of my work. I designed Steamworks, for example. So some of you have the IPA of the Winter Lager. Uh, those are some of the designs that I do with the Steamworks team. Uh, also some of the wineries uh, in the Okanagan, like Blasted Church and the like. Um, it's a very fun industry that I just stumbled upon when I arrived from France 12 years ago and I just uh, never left it. <laughs> um, I've always been very amazed how frustrating it was to get the design I made to just really have them shine. Um, you know, um, in like advertising or like in the life after, like for a product. And it's been just some things that just always um, uh, like frustrated me. And so as a result, it's just like, it's gotta be a better solution. And that's why I created out Chinery. So on the side of my design work, I also have uh, this business and I have some of my colleagues in the crowd over there. They will signal themselves later on. <laughs> Um, so the, the goal of our channery is just to explain a bit more is uh, we help wineries and breweries, so in that case mostly breweries like with this crowd, uh, sell more with quality imagery. We are like 10 times faster than your traditional photographer uh, and um, also much cheaper. Okay, enough about the shameless plug. Let's get in the meat of the product, <laughs> of the presentation. All right, so we're here today to talk about visual storytelling. Uh, and what it means for breweries uh, out there. Uh, it's uh, basically how can you leverage your beverage, so your beer, to um, really make the most of it. So I really like this quote by Seth Godin that just kind of like incites us to just take opportunities and think big and it doesn't have to be expensive. <laughs> uh, so you may have created the best beer in the world uh, but how do you tell your audience? Like, you know, you have new products coming out. You also have competition. They might be in the same room right now. <laughs> and how it's, it's crowded out there. Like, how, how, how do you tell people? Uh, a little bit, just a little bit of stats. I won't give you too many. But 75% of customers will know ahead of time um, what uh, alcoholic beverage you're going to purchase. However, beer drinkers are interesting. They're a bit funny. Because they only when they are in the shop do they recall, like do they make a choice on what beer to buy, and it comes for the brand and even like the beer, like the type of beer. So they go into store and they know they want beer, but they don't necessarily know which one. So don't be daunted or anything. Like this is like where visual storytelling comes in. <laughs> so this is where you help customer remember your product at the shelf when they're just doing this, making the decision on which product to buy. So the goal really is to uh, use relevant imagery to, like, to be, uh, 
key in your marketing and activation efforts. So with that in mind, I'm going to share with you three easy actionable steps that you can start today. Number one, uh, <laughs> tease your fan with video content. So the idea is here is to arouse interest in all things your brewery has. Uh, and videos are really the best way to do that. Uh, social, media, social media platform are really uh, promoting this type of content about anything else. We all know this, I'm just telling the obvious, but then what do you do when you have this piece of information? Because video can be daunting. It's by definition, many images in a row and getting one is already challenging enough. Uh, so here's, for example, how Threes Brewing in um, Brooklyn like used a small video to announce the win uh, for their Vlet uh, Pilsner. Uh, and it was really funny because it just stopped people in their track. They are on Instagram and they're like sliding, sliding through, and it just grabbed people's attention um, like right away um, and just kind of got the message across. This won a big award, therefore you should check it out. Another example for Mikeller San Diego, out of San Diego, they just released uh, their most iconic beer in a can format. So they just kind of wanted to, again, like announce people what was coming up. So it's all very good, but how do you do it? <laughs> so there's a couple of different um, ways to do this. The easiest way and the most fun way would be to empower your team. Like have them, uh, you know, take a phone and just um, take like pictures and make it fun and encouraging, like literally encourage people to have a fun at work and make like the most recording at once. Uh, another for example, example that we've seen work really great is like have a team member take over the, your Instagram feed or Facebook and so on and like have it like a typical day in, like it's a typical day of like the brewmaster or the tap room manager and so on and just kind of give a bit of a sneak peek behind the scene. So with this, I would like to give a shout out to Category 12s on the island. They did this really fun little time-lapse video uh, to announce uh, their, um, you know, like at first it looks like they're hard at work, but fret not, they're not. Uh, <laughs> they're just setting up a, you know, cake tree to announce that Christmas is coming. And they use this little time-lapse video that really required very little effort. It's just the phone propped on, on you know, on a tripod or something, and they announced it, uh, their special hours for the tap room around the Christmas holidays. And again, a lot of engagement and response. People noticed rather than just skimming through. Um, another one, um, like again, talking about video and storytelling, would be a very low-key and yet highly effective way to do this is customer interviews. Uh, but like spontaneous interviews, not like putting people like hard on the spot and having them sweat bullets of like, what am I going to say? Uh, so by adding faces and people to your brand, like you really make it like much more relatable and memorable at the same time. Like it's really, you are doing like customer storytelling. Uh, so I'm just going to share like what Frozy Beard in South Carolina uh, did for Valentine's. They literally interviewed uh, some of the customers and how they met. Extra bonus points, they had the different interviews in different parts of their uh, facility. So we have, you know, so they kind of also showcase uh, where they are. So I'm going to boost this. Oh, I don't know if we can hear the sound. Actually, sorry. Just. I was friends with her freshman year, and um, her and I were hanging out in her room, and she barged in and hammered. <laughs> threw a tease at us and said, order me a pizza. He asked me out once, and I said no. <laughs> yeah, but two yeah. years later, I saw him, and I, I, I just remembered him instantly who he was. And you couldn't so, resist me. That's right. <laughs> so <laughs> and I it went for about like three minutes. Again, incredible engagement from people. They can see themselves in the audience. They are the beer drinker. And of course, on every scene, they are drinking their favorite beer from that brewery. But just like subtle plug. Uh, of course, like the elephant in the room, and if uh, Instagram stories, that just took away the thunder from Snapchat. Uh, so the good thing with uh, Instagram stories is that they're super effective and they're super easy 
and they disappear. So you can really experiment and have fun. Like you don't have to fret too much about it. Like it's, it is going to go away. Uh, <laughs> so with that in mind, uh, Mikeller, New York uh, is soon to open. And it's a bit in a weird area of town. So they use Instagram stories to kind of help indicate people where, where to go, <laughs> simply. So they literally walk people through from the train all the way to the brewery. And people like, engage with them right there and then. So you build hype, you say something is coming, and at the same time, um, you just you know, bring awareness. Another shout out, like just you're trying to cover like all horizon. Uh, this is in Portland. Uh, Instagram stories are also wonderful to help uh, being part of a community and celebrating it. Uh, you know, like it's um, like very useful to just present the brewery as part of something bigger. Um, second option for like video content, uh, you can use online services with our oh, channery, shameless plug. Uh, <laughs> So, for example, uh, this is what Cannery Brewing used for the release of their uh, new maple stout, uh, and we call those uh, animated label videos. And the idea is really to catch people, uh, people's attention. You're expecting to see like a traditional product shot, and you have something much more um, happening. And when you know that the average smartphone user is scrolling 22 meters, like when you scroll through your Instagram feed and so on, 22 meters a day, which is ridiculous, uh, how do you have them stop? Like, this could be a very uh, effective way to do so. And what's really interesting is that it got incredibly much more engagement than any of the other post, post or video they had before. Uh, you can also go a bit like bigger and had sounds and trailers. I love their motto. <laughs> like that's, I wish, you know, I wish I'd come up with that. I, I can't claim it. <laughs> so again, like just something, so this, uh, a bit of a bigger product trailer, if you will. Again, entirely done online. And it's wonderful to create, um, like not only on social media, but to have it a bit more like a, a tangible, tangible piece you can use on your website, uh, to share with PR companies, just like give them something to, you know, something different. We'll go back to this a bit later. Uh, and last but not least is to go all in. And you hire the video production agency. Granted, it's not cheap. Uh, <laughs> and it takes a lot of time and effort. However, it's really a piece of content that you can leverage again and again and tells a wonderful story. Uh, I looked at a lot of them. There is one in particular that I really uh, think is amazing, Braxton Brewery, and it's about three minutes. Uh, we'll see if we go through all of it, but it's really um, quite amazing what they did. So in Kentucky. I wish, sorry, we had not more sound, but can I so they start obviously with a sense of place. We are in Kentucky. And they make it sexy. Pretty nice. <laughs> Then you have the people, of course. The recognition. And then the behind the scene, like which, I know we take it, we take it for granted, but a lot of people, like, they don't, they don't see the behind the scene. So it kind of giving an insight. really sharing the story of how the brewery came to life. It's a very like, small brewery. Have, you can have the designer. <laughs> So 
So I have to be honest, I didn't get from them how much it cost. I think they pulled some string with some of their friends, but it was at least a team of five people for it to make it happen. So to be clear, this video was used on social media, but that's also the video that welcomes you when you arrive for the first time on the website, for example. And then all about their customers. A bit on the dramatic side, I'll grant you that. <laughs> but see how they elevated the product though. Like it is still, no offense, like just beer, but they just managed to really make it special. Back to the roots. All right. So, another way. So like we talked about teasing your fan with video content. Another way it's simple and it's often overlooked is let your packaging do its job. <laughs> and how do you do that? Like you just have beautiful imagery uh, and you don't let like photography, um, you know, bring you down. I know it sounds stupid. <laughs> I know it does, but you would be surprised. You would be surprised uh, how poor imagery or lack of imagery, but I mean imagery like bottle shot, pack shot, can't like anything you want just like not having it really can impact your bottom line because uh, you miss on opportunity on brand recognition uh, and so much so we asked actually oscar at steamworks and it's like oh it made my life in sales much more like easier much easier <laughs> um, so with that in mind uh oops so for example, like, so here is like Bon Mar, uh, like using like, so this is like outshinery that allows them to have consistent and high quality imagery. And again and again, you can have products that are released months apart and you will have a consistent, ima consistent image, sorry. It's also perfect because you can have this done, like photography of your product before your beer is even ready. So you can hand it to your marketing team and really have them like start beating the drums and get people excited about your product while it's still in the making. Uh, so just to step a bit away, like sure, like the internet is great, social media, like you need imagery, but not to forget, you also have the opportunity to place it in a lot of other contexts. Uh, so it's perfect for everything else. Beautiful imagery you can use for like billboards, announcement, shelf talkers, like everything. And keep in mind as well, like it's much easier to get by with a subpar quality image on a small screen. As soon as you go that big, so just for information, that's the mom of a calling of, out, like a, a teammate of our Chinery visiting from Australia that just is standing in front of the can that um, the company your daughter works for <laughs> like, um, made. And it's just like, if you have such a big product, you need perfect, imagery for it to work. Otherwise, it's literally a waste of money. Uh, a bit of a shout out to Parallel 49 as well. These guys are super special because uh, when we started working with them, they right away got that they didn't need the physical product to get imagery. So they made the decision to actually go back and do all, all their beer bottle shots since the beginning of time. So to date, I counted Marisa and we have 60, uh, sorry, yeah, 64. Yeah, 68, sorry, 68 bottles to date. Uh, from, so you just put these bottles in a lineup, so these guys are productive, and you ju they just tell the story right there and then. They make a ton of beer, 
and this is what they've made to date, and they we're going to keep on experimenting. Okay, it's Parallel 49 is really good, uh, but they may be beaten by Mick Keller San Diego. All right. These guys are killing it. So in the last year and two months, so like 14 months, Ao did 216 pack shots. They released 216 beers in a year, a little bit over a year. Okay, don't do our <laughs> 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 It's just like, <laughs> all right, all right, this is true, we don't do it. <laughs> but it's just like, aside from like the production logistic, which are not mine, thankfully, like they have the marketing logistic as well within. So they use a chinery to just get everything done and to just like getting take care of it. So, you know, from like all the way from January 2017. So they just plug and play, like they just send us information and then they get the images and they can keep on selling beer. It's working really well for them. What's interesting is when we talk with other people in the industry, uh, it becomes clear that they want it, like, it's not that they don't want to promote like bre uh, breweries, but they just like, they want it as easy as possible. So if you have the perfect images that are ready, then like the chances that you're going to influence are going to cover your story over another one are huge. And it's just, in a way, in many ways, like kind of like free PR. Um, so this is like one that was like funny, like uh, Devin Lynch, Mikela co um, collaboration. And it, was, it is just kind of like amazing. Like a simple Google search gives 33,200 results. And it all has the same friggin' images, the three kinds that uh, we created. And they were used over and over. They got massive coverage. Granted, I know it's, it's a big like, collaboration, but it got picked up by GQ, Esquire, Eater, like, you name it. And the fact that they had these like, ready to go and delivered got them like, way more um, like, coverage than they would have it otherwise. Bonus point as well is they kind of used um, the fact that we, they can see the product before it even exists. So when they were creating the cans with David Lynch, they were like, how, you know, how is it going to look? So they kind of were, were tricking on the fly before committing anything to the press, like, and, you know, on printing. So they also saved money because this mister is very particular. <laughs> so there was a lot of back and forth, but they could do it um, without committing to, you know, printing on cans and so on. Uh, just a quick little tip, again, it may sound obvious, but as you build more and more asset, it's going to get messy. <laughs> You're going to have like, you know, JPEGs, PNGs, cans, six pack and the like, and everybody in your team will want them at one point or another. So how do you do that? Uh, use online services like, like cloud services. Dropbox is an obvious one. It's cheap. Everybody gets it. Uh, so what's great, it, it empowers your team to actually jump on any opportunities, they can access like, any, anything. It's like, oh, I need a six pack to promote. Like, they know where to get it. And you don't, you're not the bottleneck. Oh, I need to ask so-and-so for the image and possibly missing an opportunity. And what's more, uh, it allows, like, if anything happened to the computer with all the images, you're good. Like, you still have everything. Uh, we talked to some other people that are also using like, online services um, like this. And Heather um, in Michigan was saying like, you know what, what we have noticed is that people come to us first. Like they have, like we have everything at the ready. Like it's just right click, give the link and share to the editor. And the editor knowing that will rather feature them over another one where it's gonna be a pain to get access to um, imagery. Remember people love images, so publication, bloggers and so on want a lot of it. Last point, I swear. Uh, thanks. <laughs> so, and this is the easiest one. Uh, let your fans spread the love. So here's an interesting fact. According to a Forrester study, for people under 40, 70% of the content they consume, or like you know, read online or discover, is by somebody they know. 70% of what they like, read and learn is by somebody they know. I'm not saying it's... It's just a fact. So how do you leverage, um, the leverage it? So this is what we call user-generated content. And the chances are you have a tribe that loves you. Like they experience your beer, they're taking pictures with your beer, maybe mini video, post, untapped review, you name it. 
uh, user-generated content come in the form of images, videos, and any online public post. And they kind of like all go back um, to your brand. Like it just like circles back. So here's an example that I think sums it up. I'm not gonna go through an extensive collection of user-generated content, but just, just to illustrate um, how far uh, it goes. So this is like Michigan, Bell's Brewery. Uh, this guy, Zach, created this, it's a map of Michigan, <laughs> entirely made of the beer capsule of Bell's Brewery. And that was a gift he made to his friend, and it's like a tray. This, like, he shared it on his social media. The people at Bell's Brewery picked it up. They're like, okay, like, this is obviously a gesture of love. And they made the brilliant move to repost it on their own channels and give them a huge shout out. This image, crappy image, of a user generated content, 63 times more engagement than a much more polished, done, uh, you know, more corporate um, image um, that they published just the day before. So what it does is like um, having people like distribute and create content for your brand, like it kind of becomes a bit of a barometer of success and you're making it, you're creating your own success. And this little wins like of like people like talking about you, like celebrating you, they really kind of add up to create like brand awareness on a much bigger level. Remember, it's all about having people recalling your brand at the moment of purchase. Um, how do you make the most of it? Uh, super simple, just like stating the obvious, but like as a good reminder, scout for hashtags, uh, like repurpose the content. The goal here is to really make it all about the, custo like the um, customer, um, it's all about <laughs> he's a hero or she is a hero. Uh, so you just kind of take the back seat and by putting them in the spotlight, you get that much more exposure. And of course, don't forget to give credits where credits is due. Uh, here's something that I just shared, like someone in Germany got this huge tattoo uh, of, uh, st of Steamworks uh, Kettle, which is kind of funny because I sketched this idea years ago and seeing it on someone's skin is very unique and strange. Uh, but it's like for me, like this is user-generated content in the making. Why did this guy get this huge tattoo? Obviously, he must like Steamworks beer very much. Eli will know more about that, I'm sure, in the back. You can ask him. My second, like, so what's his story? My second is like, what's the story behind the, like, the, the change in the hour? Technically, Steamworks is set up at 11 a.m., which is beer o'clock. But this guy like, set his, his, uh, his hour on like 9.15. Like, there is another like, nuggets of story here, so I hope like, Steamworks will like, tap into it. But that's just something like that they just like, sprawl out um, and you can have um, a, lot of, um, like a lot of fun and people will engage with this because it's unexpected, it's fun, uh, and it's also very, very tangible. So just like to summarize, like you want to build a big story, like, like <coughs> investing marketing dollars in like strong imagery and like by imagery I mean like bottle shots, videos, uh, user-generated content, like paying the people to um, get it done, you can see some of the biggest return uh, for your business. Like visual storytelling enables you to, like, to stand out and have literally people like remember, like have this light bulb moment, you know, like when there's a chef, like, oh, I've, I've heard about this, I've seen it, therefore I'm gonna give it a try or I will like remember to pick it up. Like help people choose your beer uh, in store. And then like, just to circle back as well, like to the beginning, like the sentence about like celebrating your weird, like it's also like the occasion uh, by sh like, to share like your story, like what makes you you, like, like there's a lot of breweries here in this space, but each one of you guys are different. And like by leveraging uh, visual storytelling, you can tell uh, that story and you can celebrate your weird, because we like this as consumers a lot. Uh, <laughs> And hopefully, if like, you know, when this all goes well, like this allows you to see your work life a bit more uh, through beer colored glasses uh, rather than the rosé one. <laughs> That's it. Thank you. <laughs>
We also have uh, some other beers. So I'd like to thank uh, uh, Steamworks mm -hmm. for providing the beer. Yes, big Thomas shout out. Thomas Foley for mm -hmm. providing the beer. Bronger Brewing. Bronger Brewing. Bronger Brewing. <laughs> oh, I've got it in my head. Silver Valley. Silver Valley <laughs> for providing the beer. Can we see if anyone has questions? Yes. Yeah. I was gonna. That was gonna be there. <laughs> did, we, did we miss anyone? We're, we're Ravens. Ravens. For providing yeah. the beer. I got all the beer guys. Did we get all the? Yes. Okay. Any Thanks. questions for Laura? Thanks so much. Yes. Okay. So for. Um, oh, there's. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Didn't think about that. Um, so for uh, very new brewery, and if we want to get customers to tag us more and stuff like that, and it's mostly in-house that we're selling beer, what's a practical way, instead of going up to someone and go, hey, take a picture and tag us, right. what's kind of a more laid-back kind of way to bring it up in conversation? Very interesting, like, good question. <laughs> and, it is, and, it is, and it is a challenge. Um, like, one of the easiest way, and I hate, like, put aside the obvious of having a couple of mentions, like, uh, here's a hashtag, here, like, that's just like, just like reminder to like for people to know how to tag you properly. Um, I think, so are you, do you have people at the brewery then coming? Yeah, mostly in-house. In-house, a simple thing, but I would definitely train your staff and literally have genuinely engaged people when you pour their beer and ask them like, you know what would mean a lot to us? Could you like take a picture and tag us? And, and you can even give um, some kind of shout out, like shout out back. Uh, it could be, you know, um, like we have like talked to some people and they're just like asking, like literally asking people, but like not in a, not on a menu. Like this is just, if you just write it, like it just looks like forced and just like, who does it? Like follow me on Facebook. I'm like, sure. Yeah, no. <laughs> but like, I think the human interaction at the beginning, especially if you're a small brewery, because you want people rooting for you. And, and I wouldn't hide the fact that it would mean a lot to you and your business, and they most likely want to support you anyway. Uh, so I would, that's something that I would start there. And then once you have this, really have someone on the ball to catch this user-generated content. And, um, and remember, some things that's been posted on Instagram, you can repurpose and not only reuse it on Instagram, but also uh, obviously like on other like, platform like Facebook, or even like shout out on your website. Um, and things like that. I would, I would go if you're small brewery. I would definitely go like the human, human route first. And <laughs> yeah, no, but it's like sometimes you get caught up in like all the, um, like the tools and like. But it's just sometimes you know like just the human interaction because you have people right there and then, uh, and almost like have the staff say like, I'm, I'm what you do it now. Like show me you've done it, <laughs> but like as a joke. And the, you know, the chances are they're gonna take you up on this. Okay. Yeah. And, and your staff will have fun with it too. Any other question? I have a question based on what you just answered. Yeah. Are you saying then that uh, it's better to actually physically ask somebody to, ha to, to do it than it is to post it? Oh, sorry, than it is to post it. Like on your menu or on a chalkboard uh, like, or something? Yeah, um, I guess there's nothing against this, but if you just rely on this, I wouldn't count on it. Because we have seen it, I think maybe when the first social media started, I think it was very efficient. However, now, I know I mean, if you are an existing business, you must have an Instagram account, right? Like, like it's just, what I would say, I would write it somewhere because sometimes it's hard to get the proper handle, you know, like, like sometimes like the name and everything. So I would mention it, but I would definitely not rely on it. Uh, and if you're like, if you're, the people are already in this space, I think you can really like uh, leverage this. You have already the, the communication that's established. Uh, of course, then when you are like more like, you know, like, uh, like outside of a more controlled environment, like this is where uh, you want to go a bit more like, uh, you know, like writing it down and other like partnering up. But if you have the relationship in this space, I would totally leverage this and kind of give it like a, do mention why it matters. You know, like it's just um, like and make it about like, yeah, I, I would definitely do that. Like it's much more believable as well. People like they want to like not just help as in like rescue, but they just want to participate and it gives them make them look good, make them look good. Yeah. Any other question? I have a question. <laughs> yes, Kelty. So I've heard <laughs> Right. 
-hmm. How do you manage social media and produce all the great content that I know will benefit the business if I just have a small team of limited resources? So I'm a small brewery. Let's say. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, for example. For example. So it's really like I know every dollar count, right? Like you just want to keep it like uh, lean and efficient. Uh, this is where I recommend like empowering your team, uh, like at the beginning, like, you know, like let them, ha um, you need to give some guidelines, obviously, or just like what is okay, what is not okay. What I recommend even is not have them necessarily like posting right away on there, but have some kind of like folder on Dropbox uh, that people can just push what they took and then have someone in your team like, like, vet, like veto it, it's like this is great, this is great. And then you can use like um, either manually or like a software like Hootsuite just to like kind of schedule it out. Uh, so that's like super, super cheap. And it also like your team feels like very involved. Um, I would say like Outchannery is also very, very reasonable to kind of, um, you know, get assets and videos uh, without spending a lot of money. And also just being like efficient. Like sometimes like the best way best return on investment is just to delegate, right? Like to have somebody else do it for you. So you can, at the end of the day, I would imagine like, I know running a brewery is a lot of things in the air, like a lot and like pretty easy to be scatterbrained. Uh, and sometimes like getting like the perfect imagery like may not be on top of the list, but it has to be done because you would miss an opportunity. So just give it to somebody else that just does it like um, for a living and just like, yeah, I would recommend that. And then so you can just make the most of it afterwards and just uh, get the most return for your buck. I think one thing we've done within the company is like focused on different themes such that one month maybe we focus on getting behind the scenes content right. and another month we focus on sharing the animated videos that we produce for our clients. So yeah. thinking about things in sort of like a thematic basis, I think will maybe help you to say, okay, this Absolutely. month we're going to focus on what happens in the brewery versus the next month is really like out in the field, we're at a, an account, we're seeing like the beer. Or like the visiting a hop farms. Yeah. Uh, actually, forgot to mention, like, for all the people that attended, we're going to follow up with just a PDF uh, that we're going to send to you guys. And it's just going to be like simple prompts just to help you get a bit started. Because I know this is very high, le like, still a bit high level, but sometimes you just need like inkling of ideas to just like bring it home. So you're going to receive that in your inbox on Monday. Just like to get you a bit like started where, where to look for. And I'm not saying like follow it to the point, but it just kind of start, oh, we're not going to do this uh, like a day in the brewmaster. But maybe we're going to do this with Tanya because she's awesome and she can show us this part. Like it's just like the idea is to start creating um, your own stories. So this you're going to receive very soon as well to help you out. And if you have any questions, obviously, like this is my email address. Uh, don't hesitate. Uh, I may not have like all the answer on the spot, but I may I will do my best to you know get them. <laughs> uh, anything else? No? More beers? Yes. Beer. <laughs> Over there. <laughs> Thanks so much.